How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome to another Streamlabs OBS tutorial video. In today's video, I want to show you how to use the highlighter here in Streamlabs OBS. It's a really cool way to be able to create clips and kind of like put them all together to create one massive clip. That way you can share it on social media, you can put it on YouTube and everything like that. You don't need any fancy software or anything like that. There are some limitations to it. So, you know, take it with whatever you're able to get from it. You know, I would still recommend getting a full editing software like DaVinci Resolve. It's free and it gives you a lot more options, but this is a good stepping stone. So what you're going to want to do is log into the platform you're going to stream on here on Streamlabs OBS. And to do that, you just go to your settings and then, you know, sign in right here. And then we're going to go up to the highlighter, which is going to be this icon right up here. And if you hover over it, it should say highlighter. So we're going to go ahead and configure everything. So for you, you're going to see a button here that says configure for the replay buffer. Go ahead and click that, take a couple seconds. And then once that's cleared away, then we're going to go ahead and adjust the actual duration for how long you want those clips to be for your replay. I think it starts at 20 seconds, but you can bring it up to a max of 120 seconds. Then we're going to set a hotkey. The hotkey is going to be the button on your keyboard that you're going to press to be able to initiate the capture of the replay. And in order to be able to capture the replay, you have to be streaming. This is the only way that that's going to work. So you're going to start streaming, press the hotkey that you had set it for. For me, it's F12, and that will initiate the capture. And then once the stream is over, you'll come back here, and then you'll be able to start adding in those clips. Now, what you also want to do is you want to go to the settings, and you want to go to output, and you want to check the recording path for the output so that way you can then figure out where your videos are going and you'll be able to find them once you're done with the stream so i have mine for the recording path is set to my videos on my c drive you guys can just click browse and figure out where you want it to be we can make a separate folder for it and make it easier for you that way so once you have all that set up go ahead and start streaming you know get your clips End your stream, come back here, and you're going to click on the import a clip from your computer. Here is where the actual editor is, so we're going to click and drag some of our clips. So you can do massive selections by holding down shift and select, you know, a whole line, or you can do individual ones by holding control on your keyboard and just select the ones you want, and then hit open. All right, so I have two of the same exact clips that I have on here because I hit the button twice when I was doing the stream of Roblox on my second channel. And let me just kind of walk you through it. So you have it to where you can disable or enable. So when you disable it, it's completely grayed out and you know that it's not going to be shown inside of your video that you're doing or your clip. If you enable it, it's going to be bright. You're going to be able to see everything. And that way you know that it's going to be added. This icon here is going to be so you can trim it. And then you can also delete a clip. So if you want to trim, you'll be able to see the full duration of it, of your whole entire clip. You can drag this and move it around to wherever you want it to be. And that way you can get it to the right position. There is no save or anything like that after you make the, the edits. All you got to do is just make your edits and then click away. If you go back in, the edits are still there. So you don't have to worry about losing your edits if you accidentally click out. And then if you wanted to reorder any of them, you're going to want to click on the bottom, hold and drag to the direction you want to go, and then let go. Now if you wanted to add any type of transitions, you can do that. I personally like the 90s game, and you can set a duration for it. You can also add background music. I recommend you guys not using any copyrighted music there's a lot of royal free music out there that you guys can add but once you have it on there you can adjust the volume and then you can also preview the clips so i'm going to go ahead and quickly make some adjustments and then i'll be right back to show you what it would look like All right, so I had made my edits, so let's go ahead and click on preview. Now this is going to be a low resolution for the preview, but when you export it, it's going to be a high resolution. 
So when you click on preview, it's going to do this. It's even going to tell you that it's going to be a low quality preview. Um, but this will kind of give you an idea of, you know, what the clip will look like, how many you got in there. You'll be able to adjust any type of sounds or anything before you finally export it. And then you'll be able to also see the transitions once it gets towards that point. And then once you export it, you'll be able to give it a title. You have the area of where it will go. You can select how you'd want it to be. And then if you want it to be a certain file size and then export it, and then it will show you how many frames it is trying to render percentage. And then I'll show you the final product at the end. All right. So now we can upload it directly to YouTube from here if you would like. So if you have a title you already want to go for it and you don't want to give it a description, you can always do that later, but you can set it for private, unlisted, public, and everything like that. I don't know if this would be any different for the other platforms that you can use Streamlabs OBS with, uh, just because I stream on YouTube. I don't know if Twitch would be any different for you being able to upload it there, or if you'd be able to make it a post on Facebook. But once you're done, you can go ahead and make this bigger and you can play it and that way you'll be able to see you know how the frames are how it sounds if there's anything oh that God. you need to adjust <laughs> Bro. wow that was insane i love it i love it hey, you got here. Excellent. oh my god those are so clip worthy <laughs> Omega, what is up? Aw, oh, man, I joined, I think, in the middle of one anyway. Got a warm-up for you. How are you doing tonight, Omega? But yeah, that is pretty much it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and not upload that one on the channel or anything. But that is pretty much how you can use the highlighter to be able to create your own high-resolution uh, like videos and clips and stuff for social media, for YouTube and everything like that. And you don't need to know like any fancy software. I, like I said, I still recommend you guys using something like DaVinci Resolve, but that's something if you wanted to look into. I mean, it's also a free program too, but I mean, this does give you some pretty cool stuff, you know, just, you know, for beginners and everything. And it's really easy to use. But if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you like stuff like this, take a look at the channel. I have a bunch of other tutorials on this channel to help you guys with streaming. But thank you guys so much for your time, and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.